party primaries are here and it looks like a war of generations is upon us. In both the MDC and ZANU-PF, young candidates are coming out to take on the older politicians. In Mass Central, over a thousand people showed up at the ZANU-PF offices to hand in their CVs so that they can stand for candidates for council, House of Assembly and Senate. In Mashingo, ZANU-PF had 195 MP applicants for just 26 constituencies. Huge numbers, but the story is not of the number of candidates, no. It's the number of young people joining the race. We're seeing this across the divide, even in ZANU-PF. This is a big change for the party. Remember, this is a party whose youth secretary is somewhere in his 50s. But this time, the youths are stepping up. In Mash West, ZANU-PF provincial leader, uh, Vengai Musengi, will need a whole lot of Krimora as he's up against Webster Shamu, who's as old school as they come. In Jishavane, youth leader Louis Matutu is taking on John Holder. In Mad North, ZANU-PF is targeting women under 35 to stand in elections. As soon as Nelson Chamisa entered the race, and with the high number of young voters registering, you knew that youth was always going to be a big issue this year. We have even learned a new term, generational consensus. See, age is at the center of Wamba Dear Wamba's campaign. Vote for me, I'm young. Out with the old, in with the new. It has been an effective message, but now it's becoming a bit of a problem in Harare West. This is what's happening there. You have the current MP, Jessima Jome. MP since 2008, and she served two terms in office. She did great as Deputy Justice Minder under the GNU, and she's been chair of the Justice Committee. Basically, she's been one of the leading lights of opposition in Parliament. So it seemed that there was nothing stopping her from getting a third term as MP, right? Wrong. In comes Joanna Mamombe. She's 25. She's a biotech graduate, a former student leader, young and ambitious. Her message to Jessima Jome is simple. Just like Chamisa, vote for me, I'm young. Out with the old, in with the new. And why not, right? That's what the MDC campaign has been about. But it's not that simple. Jesse's supporters are saying, wait a minute, hang on. It's not just about age. It's about performance, experience. What more do you have to offer apart from your age? So they want Jesse protected from being challenged by a by-election. Pretty ironic, isn't it? It's been a tough one for MDC supporters to talk about without having to sound self-contradictory. Because at the national level, their big message has been this. We are young. Out of the old, in with the new. But here in Harare West, they're saying, hey, wait, it's not just about age. Besides, Jesse isn't old, at least not ZANU-PF old. At 46, she's actually one of the younger MPs we have. There are MDC MPs that have been in office much longer than her. Tapio Mashagada has been MP in Hatfield for 18 years, and he's going for another term. Innocent Gones in Mutare Central, MP since 2000, also running for office. All this shows one thing. This generational consensus thing isn't exact science. It's a lot more complicated than it sounds. Some are saying, hey, Jesse, move on to the Senate. Why? Is the Senate a retirement home? We even heard Obert and Bofu saying the same. I'm tired. I'm going to the Senate. Yes, to sit in the Senate, you must be 14 above. In the lower house, you must only be 21. But this doesn't make it an old people's home, does it? Look, we'd rather not have the Senate at all. But as long as we have it, senators must play their role. There was a time back in the 80s when our Senate was packed with experienced academics and technocrats. They refined the legislation and policies that came from the lower house. If we are to keep the Senate, let's keep it useful. It can't be a place where we park tired politicians or a place where honorable members go and sleep in peace. As for Harare West, that constituency keeps giving us good contests. In 2013, Jesse Majome was up against 25-year-old ZANU-PF candidate Varai Zompunga. This time, in the primaries, she's up against another 25-year-old. It'll be a great campaign to follow. Speaking of campaigns, have you checked out how differently ZANU-PF and MDC Alliance are running their campaigns? The MDC is doing it the traditional way. It's all about big rallies across the country, from Gueru to Murewa, and this last one in Bulawayo. The campaign is centralized. It's built around Nelson Chamisa. On the other hand, Zanu PF has gone small. They're more decentralized. They aren't doing the big rallies. At least not yet. They're doing a lot of small meetings, district by district. Here's how the Zanu PF campaign is currently working. Pay attention. Now remember that you are registered to vote at a specific polling station, right? Zanu PF has set up a commissariat team for each province. And here's what the teams are doing. First, they're setting up Zanu PF cells that match every polling station in the country. Each cell will have at least 50 party members. The job of that commissariat team is to make sure that each single person in that cell group of 50 people is registered. 
The whole point of this is that Zanopir wants to have an idea of how many votes it's actually likely to get. They want to know what they're working with. So between the MDC's big rally strategy and Zanopir's ground game, which plan is going to work? Well, we'll have to find out when the results come out. But we have to say that in this campaign, the campaign this close, you need to have a combination of both. Holding rallies is great for mobilizing support. People like big crowds, they jump on the bandwagon. Big rallies energize supporters, they raise the morale. They even scare and demoralize your opponents. That's why parties will even bust in supporters to rallies. It's all part of the game. But big rallies alone aren't enough. Take the big blow eye rally for instance. Massive attendance, but the MDC has held bigger rallies there before. Here's Chamisa's rally on Saturday and Morgan Changarai's at the same venue in 2013. Now we all know how that turned out. The point is, rallies are great, but they must be followed up by boots on the ground. The MDC had a big rally in the City of Kings, but right now, voter registration figures aren't too good. Just over 240,000 registered voters in Bulao Ayo. That's about 58% of the voting population. This is the lowest percentage of any province in the country. It's not any better than Harare, just 62% have registered. Now compare with the Midlands, 83% have registered. Yes, the rally numbers are important, but the more important numbers are the registered voters. And remember, voter registration is still open, so parties still have a bit more time to turn those big rally crowds into big voter numbers. As for Zanu PF, the groundwork is great, but let's face reality, ED needs a big rally or two to get the momentum going. Zanu PF supporters want those. That's the Zanu PF they know. They want rallies, regalia and songs, and dancing. We're told 8 million t-shirts, caps, Zambias and scarves are expected to be dished out once ED launches the Zanu PF election campaign. And if you thought this scarf was going anywhere, think again. Because our elections are held in winter, best believe they'll be worn everywhere, every day on the campaign trail.